take a moment and let's stand together and thank the Lord that he loves us so much that he chooses to use us as human vessels and yet lets his power flow through us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Let's just raise our hands and thank him right now. Thank you. And we want to say thank you from the depths of our being. And we want to give you the glory for the privilege, the privilege of walking with you and serving you in Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship and praise you, Lord. You are so worthy, Lord Jesus. You are so worthy. I praise you. You may be seated. I'm just going to share a brief conclusion from my heart that I would call the mission in both retrospect and foresight. Dr. Stephen and Regina Beardsley, Jeremy and Christina Cornett, Nick and Ben Cohen, Melody and Dolly Cooper, Ashley Cookie Lady Seth, Russ and Kim Faubert, Nathan Reaver, some of you didn't know that, the wonderful coaches, the Coopers, Brother Beardsley Sr. Not that that indicates age. It's just a mark of maturity. <laughs> Not that it indicates age. It's just a mark of maturity. Jonathan and Lindsay Walker. Norman Pasley II. His daughter, Kristen Ellis. Michael Enzi, our general youth president. David Myers, pastor in a thriving church in Palm Bay, Florida. Josh Carson, his wife, Bruce Howell, as we've mentioned. Ron Becton, Stephen Judd, Dr. Marcus Cobb, Dr. David Norris, Chris Paris, Stephen Waddell, Stephen Williford. David Trimble, Roger Buckland, RD over Pacific and Asia region, Derry Crosley, an RD, District Superintendents Matthew Martin and Jay Sterneman, Clay Strong, Jonathan Green, Jonathan McClintock, Aaron, I'll never forget his interruption, Dutton. Rich Brown, Tim Zuniga, and Amer to Germany, Lauren Matthews. And I could name more names of those you are sitting before me tonight, and I could sit here and continue to name, name, name names of apostolic leaders across this fellowship, now across this world. What do all of these and many more kingdom leaders have in common. I think you can figure that out. A background training academy called North American Bible Cuisine. Obviously, it is the single most leadership development strata of youth ministry within the United Pentecostal Church International Bar None. One of the reasons is that quizzing not only stimulates intellectual development, which it does, but it is an effective catalyst in character building. Pa 
positive attitudes. In fact, we often told quizzers in quiz seminars, the most important word in Bible quizzing is attitude. And as Sister Walker has uh, <clears throat> very eloquently and embarrassingly told you, the first person's attitude that needed adjustment was Marvin Walker's. Self-discipline, the second most important word in Bible quizzing. I always taught quizzers and coaches is, anyone remember? Daily. You have to do things daily, which builds self-discipline for the future. Submission, learning the benefits and blessings of a well-trained, well-prepared coach's directives. Teamwork, learning to blend giftings and abilities for the greater good of the team because you will be doing this in whatever church you're a part of for the rest of your life or until Jesus comes. Learning, as Sister Walker's already said, both to win and to lose graciously. Learning to give our very best efforts in preparation and in performance, yet trusting God to work the outcomes for our developmental good, as well as to the developmental good of those we quiz against. And only God is big enough to do that. Think about it. God, who is sovereign, has given men free will, and he's given the devil free will, and yet he can work his sovereign purposes by giving free will. That is one of the greatest things about God that I know. He's a big God. Turn to someone and say, he's a big God. Realizing that time spent in study can be, if done properly, with the right attitude, time spent with God. Learning his word converges over time to learning his ways through learning and then learning to apply his principles because he is a God of principles. All of this leadership development through character building equates to precision preparation to be connected with future service in the armed services of the kingdom of God. And what are we armed with? We are armed with the light emanating, gleaming, two-edged sword of his holy living word. Preparation. Learning the effective use of the sword of the spirit. The full armored Christian's principal offensive weapon. I used to say that Bible quizzing was the West Point, the Annapolis, the Air Force Academy, and Paris Island of youth preparation. But for a significant cross-section of Bible quizzing alumni, I would now say, having a more elongated perspective, that Bible quizzing is actually the special forces training for the apostolic movement to prepare a rarefied breed and targeted segment of our youth for advanced preparation during their formative years to connect, everybody say to connect. Yeah. To connect with God's purposed destiny for their future kingdom contributions. Just recently I discovered that one of my favorite Christian authors was in the service of MI6, the British equivalent of our USCIA during World War II. After having been wounded in service for his country earlier in World War I. Here's the story. When British soldiers took control of Iceland, no less, the United Kingdom authorities needed to convince the citizens there that they should serve the Allied cause. This would allow the British to deploy their much needed troops closer to the front lines. Someone in the government knew that C.S. Lewis was a scholar of Icelandic literature. I never had known that until recently. So they enlisted him in the cause. Lewis recorded a lecture in May of 1941 that demonstrated the common cultural ties between the United Kingdom and Iceland. We know this now only 
because a noted Lewis historian, Henry Lee Poe, Harry Lee Poe, has discovered a 78 RPM recording of a part of Lewis's lecture. Lewis kept his service hidden from even his closest friends. Here's the ironic part. The clandestine government agency that enlisted Lewis in the Allied cause is known popularly as MI6. You know it as the organization for which the mythical James Bond works. Hmm. But an Oxford Don, known to the world for his intellect and his creativity, actually served that agency using his genius for a greater cause. We better know Lewis as an incredible Christian author of books such as Mere Christianity, The Screwtape Letters, one of my favorites, The Abolition of Man, The Great Divorce, Surprised by Joy, The Allegorical Space Trilogy I enjoyed, Out of the Silent Planet, Paralandra and That Hideous Strength, and of course, my favorite reading to do with my son, Jonathan, from ages from about three to eight, The Chronicles of Narnia. I will never forget, as I was reading about Aslan lying down on the concrete slab, he looked up at me and said, Daddy, that's just like Jesus, isn't it? And I thought C.S. Lewis would have been giving a fist pump from his grave. Today, our civilization finds itself once again in global conflict, this time with ISIS and other radical Islamic organizations. According to an ABC News poll, 81% of us Americans expect another serious attack on our soil. The number of U.S. citizens who say terrorism is a critical issue in this country has risen from 53% in the year 2011 to 75% today. I think in the last week that might have gone up. 47% of Americans worry that they or someone in their family will be a victim of terrorism. But all of this external conflict, you see, is merely a mirror of the deeper millennia old spiritual conflict which is reaching another apex or apogee point in this 21st century. My vision for Bible quizzing started as a coach when I was a freshman in college in 1967 on the book of Genesis with Bruce Howell as we said as one of my quizzers. At that time I saw it as just a good pilot youth program. Little did I know at that time that I was injecting the word into a future director of global missions. However, after many years of coaching, I realized the greater mission of Bible quizzing wasn't a game. It wasn't just about being able to recite the word of God, but it was to get that word first into young people's minds so that it could get into their hearts so they could live it out through their lives and that it was to raise up an army of special forces for the kingdom endeavors of the late 20th and 21st century church of the living God. Paul likened us believers to members of one body, whether we are hands, feet, eyes, or ears. If C.S. Lewis could serve the cause of freedom by lecturing on Icelandic literature, we can all use our gifts for the common good and God's glory, especially when we've been through the Apostolic Teens Special Forces Training called North American Bible Cuisine Ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Such service glorifies our king and benefits us as well. Famed humanitarian Albert Schweitzer once told an audience, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I do know, the only ones among you who will be really happy 
are those who will have sought and found how to serve. Bible quizzers are trained to serve. They are trained to lead. And they are prepared to make a powerful kingdom impact both locally and globally through Christian character and strategic spirit-directed deployment armed with the ultimate weapon, the Word of God that he has exalted even above his holy name. Can we praise him together one more time? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for Bible quizzing.